Hi, good morning. Can everybody hear me? Um, so uh, I just ran through a uh, quick introduction and saw I was still muted even though I started the session. So <laughs> this this presentation is to Kai Meach Apache Ignite and it's being presented by Earl Neitzel and Adrian Fish of Longsight. Earl has been actively involved in Sakai since 2006. Uh, he is leading the Sakai core team and serves as the release manager for Sakai. His most notable contribution includes persistence of Sakai configuration. When not directly working on Sakai, he's typically working on LTI tools using Scala and Play frameworks. Adrian has been developing tools and libraries for Sakai since 2004. He's been heavily involved in some of the more recent innovations in the Sakai space, such as client-side browser alerts, a new grading tool, the rubrics tool, and the new user and course dashboard. Adrian is a full stack developer. He works on server side code, fixing bugs, refactoring old code, while also helping the community move towards a way of making our product more responsive and immediate using his client side development skills. Uh, please remember to keep yourself muted when you're not speaking uh, to avoid any uh, distracting background noise. Uh, the room is configured to mute participants upon entry but all participants have the ability to unmute themselves in order to speak or ask a question. Please be sure to double check and make sure that you are muted. Also, we please ask that you leave your webcam off unless you are speaking. If you have any questions, please enter them into the chat. You can, you can enter the questions at any time. And uh, the presenters have asked that we come back to these questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, this session is being recorded and will be available at a later date on the Sakai YouTube channel. If you have any problems with audio or video, idiot, video, please enter them in the comment, uh, in the chat box. Uh, Earl? Thanks, Derek, Thanks, for, Derek the intro. for the intro. Uh, uh, get a little bit go. of feedback, if someone can mute. There we go. Uh, hopefully, <clears throat> welcome everyone this morning. Uh, uh, Adrian and I have the pleasure of kicking off the uh, uh, the virtual conference this year. Um, uh, so that's always a joy. And uh, we brought you a great topic today, um, you know, one of the new features in uh, Sakai 21. So uh, let's get into it. It's uh, Sakai meets Apache Ignite. Uh, Adrian, did you want to say a few words? No, not really, no. Hi, everybody. Good, good morning, everybody. It's, it's two o'clock in the UK, but good morning to you all. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's move on. Let's let's do it. Uh, so uh, so we've got a, a bit. It looks like we got an agenda. Uh, we've got a couple of topics that we want to go over. Uh, we're going to kind of talk about what is Apache Ignite, um, how to configure it. Uh, we're going to demo um, one of their tools called the Visor Command, uh, and then we're going to show you a little bit of how you might monitor. Um, Ignite, and, uh, and then we're going to talk about, uh, you know, some, you know, some things that we're thinking about in the future, and, uh, and then we'll do questions. Uh, so, um, so what is Apache Ignite, right? So, uh, in its simplest form, it is a grid-based um, piece of software, um, and uh, it's been embedded into Sakai. Um, and it's uh, going to give us uh, plenty of new features um, that uh, we can now leverage. Um, uh, one of those uh, uh, has been in Sakai 21 has been to add um, distributed caching um, with Hibernate poachers. Uh, I apologize for that. Turn that off. Um, uh, so We've added a uh, Hibernate, um, we've made Ignite the Hibernate level two cache provider in Sakai 21. Um, and uh, like, like we mentioned at the end, we'll provide a, uh, a bit of like, you know, what, what is coming after or what is gonna be, what are we gonna be doing with Ignite next? Um, so uh, this is kind of a, a really, uh, a slide presentation for Ignite, um, a slide about Ignite, you know, what, uh, again, it kind of highlights the, the things that Sakai uh, um, uh, could leverage. There's also, there's plenty of other things that uh, Ignite does do, but these were kind of the ones that uh, 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 kind of cover what, uh, what we're looking for. Um, again, it's an in-memory data grid. 
Um, uh, you know, this provides a caching layer um, that speeds up, uh, you know, access, uh, Sakai access. Um, it's, uh, it's mostly replacing what was formerly known as EH cache. Um, uh, again, yeah, I mentioned it's a, it's, uh, we we're using the Hibernate second level cache, uh, currently, um, um, will it also, uh, does like stream, it also has streaming capabilities that we'd like, that we will probably be looking at in the future. Um, and it integrates with a lot of, uh, of, you know, um, uh, common, other common streaming technologies like Kafka, Storm, um, even some of the, even some of the more, uh, 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 mature ones like JMS. Um, um, it also is just simply allows, um, uh, data structures to be hosted on, on a data grid. So like creating a map or creating a list, you know, you can, you can use those as well. Um, and, and then that particular data structure is accessed, you know, from other nodes, um, which is kind of, which is, which is really cool. Um, it can also do a bunch of other things around, uh, distributed services, like creating, uh, as, as many people know, we use spring as our, uh, sort of dependency it's, it's as our dependency injection framework. And it creates a lot of singletons for us. Um, those services could also be hosted on the cloud or sorry, sorry, hosted on ignite on the cloud, hosted on ignite in a distributed our fashion. Cloud, yeah. our cloud. Our new cloud. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, it can do compute, right? So uh, think of, um, you know, you've got a task that you'd like to run and you want to run it in a distributed fashion. Um, it, it can also do scheduled jobs. Um, it has machine learning. So there's lots and lots of pieces that, uh, that make up Ignite. And uh, um, these are all available. This makes all of these kinds of things available to us to use. It's also... Um, without, you have to mention that it's also an SQL database. Um, so could Ignite one day replace, you know, could it be an actual, you know, SQL variant for, um, you know, for Sakai, like, like MySQL and Oracle are currently. So that just kind of gives you an, an overall, uh, you know, like, the, um, the, and there's plenty more, I have a reference slide where I provide links to most of all this information so that people can get to. Um, so we're gonna talk about Sakai configuration. Um, before, before, we, before we go into that, Earl, I mean, so yeah. what I also said there, the first the first couple of things like the level the level two cache, um, that's the stuff that's in, that's in 21 now. So this stuff is actually, all Apache Ignite is there, but, we've just dipped into certain areas of the functionality and the main area is, is the level two cache. So, I mean, the thing, the main benefit we get from that, from using Apache Ignite for the level two cache is that the old 15 minute cycle of data being updated across nodes is now in the order of milliseconds. Yes. So, yep, you change something on one node, like, uh, you know, an assignment or whatever, right? That's gonna like get reflected in the order of milliseconds across all your nodes. You know, the, the, you know, the POJOs, the database, um, you know, the, the database state, basically. Yeah, that... so you, you no longer have each node uh, maintaining their own, uh, you know, second level cache, basically. So, yeah, so prior to prior to Ignite, you know, every single node uh, in Sakai had its, has its own cache and has its own objects in that cache. And now all the nodes share a single cache. Yeah, and that's why that's why Earl went for went for that part of Ignite first because we wanted to try and you know get rid of that fifteen minute lag time basically. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it's, it's good. Anyway, yes. sorry, carry on. No, no, it's, that was a great point to bring up. Um, so let's uh, we'll jump into configuration. Um, this is primarily just a slide to say because uh, Ignite uh, does require. There is a certain amount of auto configuration. I try to make it, you know, as automatic as possible. But there are things that um, one would would need to set minimally. Um, 
And the minimal one here, whoops, is, sorry, I was, uh, is the, um, the ignite addresses line. Okay, so this is the this is the line that kind of configures where all where are all the other nodes, right? So you know, obviously, I wouldn't know that. So that's like the one line that you do have to configure, and you have to get this right because if you don't configure, if Ignite isn't able to find the other nodes in the cluster, then it's not going to know about them, and it's going to you know pretty much act on its own, you know. So, so in, in a sense, you would be back to sort of the way it was working, you know, prior to at night, right? Um, uh, but all, so I'll just go over some of these. So like Ignite node, name, home, and mode are all, are all defaulted. So node defaults to the Sakai server ID, which that is unique for each node, right? So this is like your, you know, uh, you know, Sakai, Sakai, you know, node 01 or node A, node B kind of thing, right? Um, then you have your name, the Ignite name, which is uh, going to be using the server name, which is the same for all your nodes. And that is the cluster name. That will, uh, that turns into the cluster name. So that is, uh, um, you know, that is how uh, Ignite won't allow a node in that, doesn't claim to join that 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 particular cluster, right? With that name, um, the home directory that's simply you know Ignite's work directory, which is Sakai Ignite, um, Sakai Home. Sorry, it's Sakai Home, uh, um, uh, Ignite. Um, it's very traditional esque of like the same place like Elasticsearch uh, has its uh, work directory. Um, and then the mode is set to server by default, um, but you can um, you can set it to a client mode, which means that it's not going to um, it's not going to create. It'll act as a client, meaning it'll contact one of the other nodes for any data. Basically, it's not going to actually store data on this node. So then we come into uh, sort of the network configuration. And the network configuration um, will look something like where the address is the interface of the server that you wanted to, to bind to, right? So if you have a server that has, you know, three NICs and they go to different networks, um, you know, you'll need to, you know, pick the NIC, pick the interface that you want Ignite to bind to there, okay? Um, then the addresses, uh, oh, sorry, I should put, so I should mention port next. So port is obviously the port that goes along with that address, right? Um, so in this case, you know, I put 59, 100. Um, and then uh, the range, which also affects the port, uh, this is, uh, the range is defaulted to 10 by default for Ignite. So basically what Ignite's going to do, it's going to take port 59, 100, and it's going to count, it's going to reserve 10, uh, 10 uh, ports. So from 59.100 to 59.109, it'll reserve those ports for TCP uh, traffic. And then it reserves another 10 ports by, def uh, by default, um, where these are the discovery ports. So in all, it will reserve by default 20 ports. What you see here is my local configuration where I've changed the range to say, well, I only need one port because I'm doing this locally. So I, I don't really need, um, I don't, I don't, I don't really need the extra ports, right? So in this particular case, um, it's going to create one TCP port and one discovery port. That's, and then that brings us to ignite.addresses where you can see 59100 will be my TCP port and the very and since since I only have a range of 1 my discovery port will be 59101 and you can see in my oops I'm sorry I clicked it again <laughs> and you can see in the addresses this is this is the list of all nodes so including this node it doesn't matter if you include your current node 
um, which is great because that means this Ignite addresses line can be the same on all your nodes, okay? So you just literally uh, specify every node, every node's NIC, right? And their discovery port, okay? And, and, uh, and so in this particular, uh, in our demo today, I will have two nodes. And so therefore I have 59, uh, on one on 59100 and the other one on 59200. So the discovery ports are 101 and 201. So hopefully that explains, uh, you know, uh, the network configuration. That is probably the most complicated part uh, like people will run into when they're switching from Sakai 20 to 21, right? In 21, they need to know to, if you have multiple nodes, you will need to know to do this. If you don't have multiple nodes, it will do everything. It'll, it'll automatically configure everything. Um, I, like I said, I did try to auto configure as much as possible so that there wouldn't be too much that would be needed. And in theory, if you allow um, all the auto configuration, you don't really touch a whole lot. Um, all you really need to set is the ignite addresses, um, potentially. I mean, you can, I would have, I would, if you're in a multi node situation, I would advise, you know, being a little more explicit like setting Ignite address, setting Ignite port. If you don't want to use the default range of 10, like I did here, you can adjust that and then set your Ignite addresses. So these four options is really what, in a multi-node environment, what everyone should be setting up or should so be configured. So, so they've, they've all got to be really consistent, right? Those those last four, you know, address, addresses, port, and range, right? Correct. They're the, yeah, they're the things that have um, got to be in lockstep, yeah? Correct. Exactly, they got to be accurate. Otherwise, you'll you'll you will run into issues, and we'll and we'll see that a little bit uh, later on. Um, if you've got it configured correctly, you'll see what it looks like, and then you'll and you'll know that you have it correct. Um, okay, so Sakai properties is important for configuration. Also, is the Ignite components XML. Um, which I'm going to just uh, switch to real quick so that we can uh, uh, take a look. This is the Ignite Components XML. Uh, I am. I apologize if that uh, uh, isn't. Uh, if that is hard to see. Um, uh, as you can see, uh, uh, this XML file is a typical Spring configuration file, and in here we do configure a bunch of things. Um, uh, most notably is, for example, our data regions, right? Which is this kind of this, uh, these beans here. There's a spring region and we have a hibernate region. Um, so as you can see, uh, we can set, you know, sizes. We can size, uh, for example, set the max size on, on this uh, data region. Now it's mindful to keep in mind that these data regions, these are what are called off, they're off heap by default, meaning they're not in the JVM's memory. So what Ignite, Ignite, can act, Ignite will address memory outside the JVM. And in this case, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is how this is done. Uh, so we set up a region for the Hibernate POJOs and we set up a region for Spring, okay? Um, and we'll, I'll talk about spring in a little bit later. Uh, and then, um, and then we, uh, as we, as we come to some of this is, uh, you know, just, you know, it's self-explanatory. You come down, this just actually, uh, says here are the data regions that, uh, we're going to be using, um, uh, that we're going to be configuring the, uh, there's also, um, um, yeah, these are some, pro so we'll go over some of that. Here are the caches. Um, uh, these are the two types of caches that we, uh, uh, these are the uh, basic hibernate ones, which are the default, uh, the update timestamps and the query results caches. Okay. Um, and then we come down into our core list of caches. So these are, these are needed by hibernate, these two caches, right? Um, the, the, the update timestamps 
every single object that is put in the second level cache will have a timestamp on that object. Um, and then uh, the query results obviously is, is for uh, uh, is to cache the uh, results of queries. Um, and again, so we have a region for those. We've got a core list of of objects um, uh, that uh, you know that that we use in Sakai that are added to the Hibernate second level cache. This is a big list, as you can see. This is where, if you're going to create a new cache or uh, you know add a cache to an existing one, this is typically where you're going to be doing this. Is in here, okay? And then we have a section for contrib tools. Um, these contrib tool caches, these are optional. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that if if you don't deploy this contrib tool that uses these caches, then it will not create them. Okay, so this is conditional. Conditional caches is what is what they're is what they're called. And um, and what it does, the conditional cache, what it does is it checks to see if that class has been deployed to Sakai. If it has, then it will enable that cache. Um, we will be adding more caches to this list from contrib tools. Um, but currently you can see, I believe it's the, um, uh, um, Oh, what's that one? The SCORM one. Uh, that's what this is. This is the SCORM, the SCORM, because uh, a lot of people tend to use the SCORM. And you'll notice that a lot of these, a lot of these uh, caches are, they have a parent, whether it's atomic or um, transactional. And these are the two parents. So you've got an atomic parent and a transactional parent. Transactional um, means that, um, you know, there are, you know there are trans transactional semantics added to that cache, so to to ensure consistency, right? So um, that's kind of um, you know what uh, you know the, the two, two caches that you will typically want to use atomic um, um, over the transactional because there's overhead um, for the use of transactional. Um, but it is here because it is used in a few places. Uh, okay, so that's the that's the spring config. That's the components XML. That's the spring configuration, and then the last and final configuration spot is the ignite configuration adapter. This is just a simple Java class, and it is basically where all the ignite uh, configuration starting and all that stuff is done. So if there is something that you want to configure that, for example, you outside of like what we've already kind of set up as uh, being configured, this is the place you would want to come make a change and do that. This is where the auto configuration happens. So be, you'll be able to see that here. You can see this is where it configures the home. Uh, this is where it does pull in all of these properties, again, like Ignite Address, all the things that we've already seen. This is the class that brings all that together. So that's pretty much it on the configuration. I'm going to try to go a little bit quicker here so that we don't run out of time. Um, so the next thing what we're going to do is we're just going to do a quick demo on Ignite Visor. And uh, uh, real uh, this is uh, what Ignite Visor is. Uh, it is a, uh, it's a command line tool um, basically to manage uh, uh, Ignite nodes in, in a cluster. And there's just a couple commands that I've listed in here that are probably, that would be popular. Um, and this is how you launch it. So we're going to do that now. So I have a cluster already running. Okay. Um, you, have to, you have to bump your font up, Elma. <laughs> I, I do, right? Don't I do? Yeah. Okay. So look, so I will do this one here. So I have two nodes. I just want to say I have a node A and a node B. What I've done in this log, and I will bump this up. Tell me when. Oh, a bit more, I think. A bit more. Yeah, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, looking I mean, good there. Okay, so yeah. 
So this is, I use multi-tail here to tail both logs of both nodes. So both nodes will appear here. Uh, I believe it's node A is the um, green, I want to, or blue. And I think node B is uh, is the green. Anyway, we'll see which one, I forget which one is which. But anyway, one is, so the if it's colored in green, it comes from node, it comes from one, you know, if it's blue or green, it'll depend on what node it comes from. And uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect, uh, let me bump this one up. Yeah, just to be clear, that was the, that was the Tomcat logs we were just looking at, Catalina.io, yeah? Exactly, yep. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect using the Ignite Visor command. This is just simply, I downloaded Ignite, the binary uh, sort of zip file. You unzip it and you get this, you get this installation. That's all this is. It's nothing special. Um, I've only added one file to this installation, which is in the config folder. I created the Sakai localhost configuration. We'll look at that really quickly. Um, it is a very simple file. And in there, I'm just, all I'm really saying is, I guess I'm doing an Ignite configuration, and all I want to configure is the discovery piece, right? And as you can see, I added both values of both of my nodes, right? So node A, node B in here. That's literally it. It's like setting ignite.addresses is basically what we did. And then I'm going to run this command, ignite visor command. And we're going to open a new session. And it's going to show me these are a bunch of examples and things that come with ignite. I could have got rid of them. But the one that we're looking for is this guy. This is the local host one that I created. I just showed you that. So we're going to connect. And you're going to see that it, it connected. And, uh, and then I'm going to switch uh, back to over here. And what you, uh, if, we were, if we were watching this, you would, saw, you would have saw a bunch of scrolling um, because this is all Ignite saying, you know, both servers saying, oh, I've detected a new, you know, there's, a, there's someone who's joined the node, right? Now, the visor command doesn't join as a full, full clustered, you know, it's, it's just there as like a monitoring thing, right? So it's not going to participate in the cluster. Um, but it does, it does, it does connect in, in the same way. Um, uh, you can also, uh, using the standalone Ignite installation, you can also make this a node. All you have to do is literally configure that, that XML file that we just, that we just saw. If you were to configure that, um, appropriately, um, this, this single binary Ignite uh, would actually participate in the cluster um, as well. It would be, it would come up as another node. So I'm going to really quick do a top command, which is topology, and you're going to see I got two nodes, node A and node B, right? And so it sees that total of two nodes. You know, it kind of tells you some some interesting information. Um, we can actually type node in. It's going to say, well, pick, uh, what do you want to know about a node? Let's, let's pick node A, and uh, we can get detailed stats. Um, um, and you can see this is, uh, this is just the regular stats from it. Kind of tells you a little bit. If I wanted detail, I could have uh, picked that. Whoops. Node zero, yes. And it would show me more detail. Notice in here, it shows me the data region. As part of the as part of the detail, the data regions that are configured, like the hibernate and the spring region, you can see that here. You can see the total memory that's been allocated. You, know, you can kind of see all this kind of stuff. Uh, let's see what caches that that we currently uh, have here. So you can kind of see if we did when we did cache, it kind of came out and said, okay. Uh, here's all the caches, which we have a lot of them. Um, but like, for example, let's just go up to like, uh, I guess like assignment, right? Um, let's see here, here's assignment cache, right? 
and it kind of it tells you you know the stats about it and, and that kind of stuff so this is a great way to see that that kind of stats um so this is this is basically um you can also get the config for a node there's there's a lot of things that you can do with this um but this is just simply the visor command i put links also about where uh where you can look for this um but that is simply uh, uh that's it in a nutshell so let's uh we're going to move on here um so let's jump into monitoring uh <clears throat> and uh so the so how could we monitor ignite right this is important because you need to monitor ignite one of the really nice things about ignite is that it's monitoring your jvm and it's going to tell you about things, things that you never knew before. Um, when you were running Sakai, like you never knew, like if you were having GC issues, Ignite will be will be vocal about that stuff because it's monitoring it. Um, and if you start to run into GC issues, it's going to be vocal and it's going to say, hey, something's wrong with this node. It's taking too long to do GC. Something's not right. And it's going to be vocal about that stuff. So sometimes a lot uh, when you see Ignite, start complaining about things in the log or being vocal about things in the log it's just it's just letting you know it's not because ignite is is the problem or anything or necessarily the issue um you know that you need to tweak or something it's more that ignite has been monitoring sakai and it's kind of telling you that like things are not in a good way and so and it tries to tell you maybe why that might be um but anyway we can we can monitor ignite using traditional JMX, like through Visual VM, right? We can monitor it through an endpoint in the entity broker. We can monitor it through the visor command, which I just kind of showed. There's also one called the control script, which is like a mini version of the visor command. Um, and then there is something called Contr Grid Gain's control center. So Grid Gain is the company behind Apache Ignite. And uh, and they create a monitoring solution for monitoring Ignite um, that you can look at, which is all web based. It's very nice looking. Um, it's it's not um, a uh, it's not a free uh, uh, you know it's not a it's not a free product. So you would have to have uh, you know you would have to probably you know look into that. Uh, but real quick, uh, we can just look at. Um, um uh we'll look at uh just real quick like uh a couple of the uh monitoring like visual vm um we'll use visual vm that's you know that's so that we can just uh these are the two tomcats that i have running right i'm going to connect to one of them i'm going to go over to the m beans right this is jmx right this is all jmx stuff and in here we have org apache ignite right we have uh and we can see we have our sakai node um, that's, uh, that's kind of started up. You can see here's all my caches. And if I were to go, uh, you can click on them and you can get all the stats. See? So, uh, you can go down to like data regions and look at the different regions and get the, get the, you know, get some of the information. The great thing about JMX is it has operations, right? So like you can, uh, you know, you can do different things there. Which is kind of nice. So, like, you can, change, the, you can change things at runtime, right? You can tweak, right? Can tweak. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you can come here, like, in operations, and like, you can clear the cache. You know, this is a great. So JMX is great for this kind of stuff. This is normal JMX stuff, yeah. but um, this is showing you that Ignite has all these uh, sort of things that you can monitor and do. Okay, so that's JMX. Um, next is the entity broker so i did set up uh let me get it up here um so in the entity broker uh there is an ignite uh uh there is an ignite uh endpoint i guess i should uh go back one here but everybody's familiar with like this right this is direct right and in here there will be an ignite one and here you can kind of come, you can click on, for example, I wanna see the cluster information, right? Um, and obviously you can like 
put on the end here, dot JSON to make it look all nice and pretty. And you can see it says, oh, you got two nodes. And it shows you the, the, uh, the sort of uh, internal ID, the consistent ID. Remember, this is the server ID, node A, node B, right? And then it shows you the version of Ignite that's running. It shows you kind of the state that that's running this Ignite instance name, Sakai. This is the uh, server name, if you recall. So it would, this was what this would be. Um, and so you can kind of, uh, you know, you can kind of see a little bit of information with that. Uh, let's jump back to caches. Let's, or oh, here's local node information. So this one's kind of nice. This would be the local node stats for this local node. Again, this could all be, all be gotten as well through the visor command and JMX. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, let's see here, we've got uh, caches. So let's check out our caches, right? Here's all our caches, right? This is real nice. Um, so if we click on the assignments cache, we can see the same information about the assignments. And of course, you can always put your .json on the end to make it look all nice and nice and pretty, right? Um, you can I mean, also so, do... Oh, so so yeah. I mean, basically, if you, had a, if you had a node, right, that you're having issues with, you could basically go to that node, you could hit up direct, and you could just look at the caches quickly using this, right? Say you've not installed Vive or, yeah. Correct. And if you're logged in as an admin, okay, um, I believe, uh, so if you log in as an admin, and you come back to cache, uh, maybe I, uh, let me uh, log in. Uh, so if I log in as an admin, you will get a little, you get a few additional, uh, you get a little additional option here. I'm just gonna get in here. You've got demo fingers, man. Demo fingers. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay, there. See? So all of a sudden this clear option came up. So if you're an admin with you can click clear and this will clear the cache. Now if I go back over to multitail, you will see here there's a line here that came out on this node that says clear cache, cleared cache, this assignment. There were two entries in the cache. And it'll say by the user. It's like way off the end of the screen, though. So, but it'll say like by by admin did this, right? So, it'll kind of show you that. So, so that's kind of neat. So that you can actually, uh, you know, um, sometimes it's important to clear a cache. Like, when would it be important to clear a cache? So, uh, we know sometimes that um, your support folks need to like make minor changes in the database right maybe they have to go in and they have to you know make an adjustment or something like that well remember these objects are cached in they're cached now right i mean like these are cached objects right so if i make a change to an assignment and that assignment happens to be cached right it's not going to uh it's uh you know Hibernate didn't know that somebody went in manually to the database and made a change, right? Maybe like somebody went in and, and like set the deleted flag from, you know, from true to false, you know, to re, you know, to, to do that. So maybe somebody did that, right? Um, but if that object is cached and you went in through the database manually to do that, it's not going to show up, right? Because you're going to still see the cached version, right? Because Hibernate will invalidate the cache when it sees changes. But if you go in and, and circumvent Hibernate, right? Basically, you know, doing a manual SQL query, um, then you're not gonna see the changes, right? Because they're still in the cache and Hibernate didn't know you did that because you didn't you didn't tell it that, it that you did that, right? So if you did something like that or a support person did something like that, you'll need to, you'll need to clear the cache. And you can do that through the through the entity uh, broker, or you can do that through JMX, for example. You can also do it through the visor command. Visor, you can do this exact same thing through the visor command. 
Um, yeah, and um, so, that, down the line, down the line, what we'll do is we'll we'll add a uh, you know a console, you know, an admin, an admin tool that we've currently got with the old school caches to do this, won't we? Probably. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We we would like to make something a, a lot nicer that would kind of uh, uh, expose some of the, some of all of the features that Ignite you know has and 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 do that like in an admin tool, you know, in the future. Correct. So let's see here. Uh, let's get back to the because we're we're gonna run out of time. So when I get to when I get to uh, so that's monitoring. Okay, so we we made it to the timeline. Okay, so we're, we're we're real close to questions. So we've got uh, Apache Ignite uh, was added to Sakai twenty one. Um, and it's and we added uh, two caches basically the Hibernate second level cache and Springs J cache. Okay, Sakai 22, um, we did lots of tuning. We added conditional caches for Contrib. Um, you know, we did a we did there was lots of tuning done to done to Ignite to get it to, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, just to get it uh, to be uh, performant in a Sakai. Uh, environment. Uh, most of that has been ported back to 21. Um, so, but all of that stuff was done in the in the Sakai 22 development cycle. Yeah, that was, um, that was real world tuning, right? With 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 our you know without with our clients, right? You know, there there were a few rocks in the road, and and the tuning needed to happen. So, I'll, yeah, it's real world performance stuff that's that's been done. Yeah, and then we've got so then we got for Sakai 23. Uh, we've got, um, you know, we want to make Ignite our single cache provider, meaning we remove EH cache, we remove Terracotta, we remove Hazelcast. So all of these other caching solutions that uh, really never really got off the ground. Uh, there might be an institution out there that might be using it or, or such, um, but there's very, very few um, using any of this stuff. So all of this is going to be, I mean, EH cache was used by everyone, but um that that is just going to we're going to remove that'll be finally removed and uh ignite will be the single cache provider uh for all sakai's you know for sakai moving forward just a five um, minute warning guys okay thanks derek uh so you know we will do you know there's other things we can do like we we're thinking of doing events uh we can do publish subscribe you know for those kinds of events uh, the big one for Sakai 24 is distributed sessions that we're looking at, which is where, you know, if a user's on one Sakai node and say, say you know, there's a node that needs to come down for maintenance, you know, and it's got 100, 200, you know, maybe 500, you know, users on it right now or 1,000 users, right? Well, you shut that node down and all those users don't notice anything. They just move to another node. That's, that will come with distributed sessions. So that's coming. Um, we've got, um, and then we've got things we can do in the future, but let's get to questions. Cause I, I know we're, we're running out of time. So let's do this. <laughs> One of the first questions I saw here was from Sean and configuring ignite our fixed IP addresses required, or can a list of domain hosts uh, be supported? Uh, yeah, you can use domain host names too. DNS names, but typically in this kind of configuration, you typically don't like to leave that up to um i mean yeah you can use it it's totally fine to use that totally valid the dns or ip addresses doesn't matter just needs to be resolved i'll leave it on the timelines in case somebody has questions about that because that's likely where any other questions just ones i see so far so if you guys have any questions feel free to type them in the chat <laughs> That's a good one, Matt. <laughs> a cash. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so that's a good question, Sean. Um, Sean asked about uh, the question is, what is the memory footprint recommended for Ignite over top of Sky pre Ignite? So. Okay, so let's let's talk about that because that's a really good one. Actually, it's a very good question. Uh, so because we're moving, 
these data regions off heap, right? Meaning what's going to happen is when Sakai starts up, you know, just like normal, it, you know, all of those caches um, or all of the caches in Ignite are no longer just memory that's used in the actual JVM heap space, right? So uh, it can be configured to go back that way, uh, but by default, it's not. So what that means is that all of the, the data regions that we mentioned, right, the, which is the Hibernate and the Spring one thus far, um, those data regions are all off heap. So you will want to size uh, those cache regions appropriately. And you can do that in the XML file that that uh, um, you know that that showed before, and you definitely uh, uh, typically uh, one of the you know it's just you know adding more memory to those to those uh, to those data regions specifically the hibernate the hibernate region <clears throat> is definitely important. Um, you know you want to size that the more memory you give it the bet the more you're caching the better your performance will likely end up being. So uh, adding, uh, adding more memory to those, uh, uh, I would say what we've done uh, is we've, we've gone, we've added uh, up to two gig is what we've done for just Hibernate. So we've given Hibernate uh, two gig all, of, all on its own. The good thing is, is like that stuff now is not in the Java heap space. Right, so that's a really nice thing, actually, because that's actually a good thing for the heap. Because previously in EH cache, all of that is sitting on the Java heap, right? And so, um, you know, that's just memory that's being taken up, you know, on the Java, you know, on the Java heap for caching, which is kind of like what Ignite was like. That just makes no sense, right? I don't want to say it makes no sense, but there there are some cases where it does make sense, but most of the cases. You know, you know why tie up that memory in your Java heap space um, when that should be for running your Java application, right? And so all of this, all of this memory is stored off heap. It is serialized, so there is that one. There is that one part where um, everything is serialized. But um, when you're replicating caches to other nodes, right? Um, it has to be. Uh, the fact that it's in a binary format serialized already is actually a good thing because then it serializes really fast to all the other nodes. So it's just something that would need to happen anyway. Um, even if you were to put those those back on heap, um, you know. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. We are out of time. A couple quick questions came in here, Earl. I don't know if you can address those real quick. We do have the welcome session starting in nine minutes, um, but I don't know if you wanted to address these couple questions real quick or if you want sure. to follow up with email. Let's see what we could do. What do we got? As long as like customers, anything we should mention when scheduling 21 upgrade or we already got this in the workflow when they go to 21? Yeah, if you're a long site client, we we've we know all this. Um, all this is addressed without any without without a whole lot of input. Um, you know, this is stuff that we do on the, on our end. All right, so that's, should, that's all covered. All right, should we keep the caches on a separate node or on any Sakai node? So, what should the Ignite address be? So that's a great question. Um, every node by default participates as a clustered node. So every node will have its own off heap cache, and um, and obviously uh, that is its cache that it's going to be using. Um to uh and it will be and that cache will participate it's distributed so it will be replicated to the other nodes remember this is a single distributed cache when one node invalidates something in the cache all it gets invalidated for all nodes right because the cache is, is distributed it's not it's not multiple caches it's a single cache it's just distributed uh let's see what else is this applicable for LDAP precache? It is currently not. Maybe in the future it will be. Sounds like a good future uh, addition. Okay, that is it for the questions.
All right. Well, thanks, Earl. Thanks, Adrian. Uh, thanks all who joined this morning. Um, like I said, uh, the next session starts in about seven minutes, and you can find the connection details to that from the conference home uh, site there in Tri-Sakai. Great. And I will upload the slides for everyone to see and because um, uh, it contains useful links. Yeah, thanks, I'm everyone. That was exhausting. I mean, I'm so exhausted presenting that. <laughs> 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 Thanks, everyone. We need a rest. All right. Cheers. Bye. Thanks, guys.